have classes at the Performance Center. So um, I have in-ring training from 11 to 1. So every day, 11 to 1. And then I have uh, weight training from 1.30 to 2.30 every day. Okay, okay, okay. So 11 to 2 or something, right? Your yeah, training. 1 to 1. Oh, wow. Two hours. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And which kind of routines you have there? Um, so we work on a lot of like, uh, for in-ring, we work on a lot of technique. So um, making sure that uh, when we're wrestling, we're, we're looking towards the cameras so that people that are watching on TV can see everything that we're doing. Um, and yeah, just a lot of technique, a lot of footwork. Um, and then for our weight training, we have um, we have different days. We do different body parts. So Monday we'll we'll do upper body. Um, Tuesday we have our live show. So we don't usually like maybe cardio in the morning on our own. Yeah. Um, Wednesday we have uh, legs leg day. Thursday we have upper body again. And then Friday usually it's a little bit of like mobility training some a little bit of cardio so yeah wow you train a lot that's a lot. great <laughs> but they're okay. i like their workouts because they're very usually we won't lift too heavy it's more so their workouts are for longevity so that um our body is not so sore when we're wrestling on the weekends wrestling on yeah. okay wow a ver Padrísima su rutina porque me dijo que ella entrena dos horas diarias, más o menos. Este, y lo que le enseñan, o sea, porque esa era mi duda, ¿no? De, ¿qué, ¿Qué es lo que aprenden en el Performance Center? Y ella me dijo, mira, aprendemos técnica, pero aparte de la técnica, lo que tenemos que hacer es saber que cuando estamos eh, en combate, o sea, cuando estamos luchando, tenemos que voltear a la cámara y tenemos que enseñarle al público lo que estamos haciendo. Y también después de eso pues tienen ellos como diferentes días donde trabajan diferentes partes del cuerpo. Más allá de que hagan como mucho peso, hacen como, o sea, entrenan como la longevidad, o sea, como eh, la duración. Porque si llegan a hacer mucho peso, luego pueden estar como, o sea, no van a rendir a la hora de la hora, a la hora de la televisión. Entonces, ya lo sabemos. I think it's, it's very important, right? I mean, I didn't, I didn't think about that even that I'm working here like for a long time, but of course that would be really, really complicated to have your mind, not just in your skills like wrestling, no, 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 as well, your skills like, okay, the camera is there and I have to do this. Oh my God, it's a lot of things that you have to do at the same time. Yeah, it, it is really, like uh, difficult because you you have to be paying attention to so many things at once. Um, But uh, I, I trained under Booker T uh, when I was in the independent scene. And at his school, he also has a wrestling show called Reality of Wrestling. And that's the first place that I went to on the Indies where he uses cameras. So it's a, it's a very nice setup, kind of like NXT. And he taught me how to look at the cameras and, and stuff like that. So when I came to NXT, it was a little bit easier to, to catch on to it. To learn that. Okay. And how long was that? Uh, with the Booker T? Yeah. I started I started at his school when I was 16. Yeah. What? So I was with him for about for about three years, four years. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. But when when do you start? I mean, like, when do you realize it's like I want to know all of this kind of thing? It's like When Roxanne realized that I want to be a superstar, a um, wrestler? I was like, I was 10 years old and um, I started watching wrestling and uh, I saw the guys wrestle and I just thought it was so cool. And I thought it was so cool how they did. Uh, they had storylines and then they're wrestling and it's a little bit of like theatrics. And I thought it was really cool. And then I saw the woman wrestle and I was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> It's possible to do that. So, um, yeah, since I was 10 years old, I would tell my parents, when I'm older, I'm going to be a WWE wrestler. And they were like, okay, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you're going to do. And, yeah, I was so serious about it. And I started training when I was 13. 
I found a, a local wrestling school where I'm from uh, in Laredo. And I started training there. And then, yeah, when I was about 16, I, I started training at Booker School, which is in Houston. Okay. Well, I need to translate this. And after we keep going yeah. to this, um, into this. A ver, eh, wow, es una cajita de monerías esta chica. Eh, le pregunté acerca, bueno, no, no, no. Ella me dijo que empezó a entrenar cuando tenía 16 años con Booker T, ¿no? Y que justamente ahí, él, ella empezó a saber de este tipo de, de herramientas que necesitaba, ¿no? O sea, que no solamente era luchar, sino que también tenía que estar al tiro de las cámaras y de todo esto que, que ahora hace en NXT. Pero todo este viaje de Roxanne dentro del mundo de la lucha comienza cuando ella tenía 10 años y a ella le gustaban las luchas y se da cuenta de que también hay chicas que son súper estrellas y que son luchadoras y ella dice, ¿qué? ¿Que yo también puedo ser luchadora? Mamá, papá, yo quiero ser luchadora. Y sus papás le dijeron, ok, va, está bien, si eso es lo que quieres, está chido. Que a mí eso me encanta. O sea, sus papás le dijeron, sí, vamos, te apoyamos. ¡Qué bien! Y entonces, a los 13 años, ella empezó en una escuela en Laredo. Eh, ya de este lado. México, right ¿En México? Sí, sí. Yes. Ok. Entonces, ella empezó en México... Y a los 16 fue, fue cuando ella se, se fue a la, a la academia de Booker T. ¡Wow! Y sigue estando súper joven. So, for example, how was your experience here in Laredo? Well, not here, but there, in Laredo, Mexico. Yeah, uh, there's a Nuevo Laredo, which is in Mexico, and then uh, yeah. the Laredo, which it's right across the border. So I could, like, when I was a kid, like, I would go with my dad to Mexico and, like, because it's, like, a 10-minute drive and the... Uh, yeah. I would get like the the snacks and all of that. I thought it was so pretty over there. Um, but uh, okay, thank you. It's nice. Like I I loved Laredo. I miss it. it. Was it's a very like small town, so everybody knows everybody. Um, so when I did start training, um, I was like, so I was in middle school when I started training. So I wouldn't really tell a lot of people because I just I kept it very private. I thought like when I was in elementary they thought it was weird that like a girl likes wrestling and yeah. I kept it to myself when I was in middle school. I didn't really tell anybody that I was a wrestler. Um, and then when I got to high school and I actually started doing Booker T's and, and a lot of like other wrestling promotions, everybody found out. And then <laughs> it was on like the newspaper and people would be like, oh, <laughs> you're the wrestler. And like, just I'm in the grocery store. They're like, Oh, you're that wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I know someone that he knows you. He he told me that he was doing a documentary or something with you. Bro. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said like, oh my God, this girl is amazing. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I uh, when I first started training in, in Laredo, um, he's a luchador, his name is Daga. And uh, he would he would come to Laredo and he would train all of us. It was maybe like six of us uh, and I was the only girl. Um, I was the only girl in, in the place that I would train at. So there were like, I was like 13 years old and I saw these older, older men. <laughs> and I'm like, I I'm going to keep up with you guys. And I did. Wow. 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 But you train like almost uh, how long, per, uh, how many times per week? Um, I would train probably like there was a time when I would want to go to training every day. But my mom, she would kind of. She was supportive. She would be like, yeah, you can you can train, whatever. But she would kind of limit, limit it a little bit because she was scared that once yeah. I get body would be worn down. She's like, you can't go too much because, like, you know, you're just throwing your body on a mat every single day. Like, kind of, like, limit it a little bit so that you take care of your body. <laughs> so maybe okay. twice a week. So, but you try with your parents, you drive, like, for two hours or something or 10 minutes or something like every day, right? Yeah, so my mom would take me to my training when I was younger. Um, and then, yeah, it was like maybe like 15 minutes, 20 minutes from the house. And um, sometimes I would like get rides from from people that I trained with. And actually, like, uh, two of my trainers, their names are George Benavides and Johnny Angel. They're the ones that uh, first started training me before Daga would come down. And... They they were like my big brothers. Like my mom loved them. They would like they were 
amazing guys and uh they would take me to training sometimes they would take me to my wrestling shows when they were like in san antonio or houston dallas um and then when i turned 16 and i wanted to start training at bookers i would actually go on the bus so i'd take the greyhound bus and it was maybe like seven hours eight hours and i would go by myself like i had my homework with me i would do it on the bus and uh, I would go on the weekends and then come back. Or like, let's say I had spring break off during school or like Christmas break. I would go, I would go over there and I would uh, train. My so you, you, prefer, you prefer to spend your vacations wrestling instead of uh, just like going with your friends and hang on your yeah. friends and everything? I was in school, yeah, um, and sometimes my friends would be like, oh, come on, like, go out with us, like, come out with us and go to this party. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to go train. <laughs> wow! I was just so serious about it. I was like, okay, if, if I want to make it to the WWE, I have to, I have to be disciplined and I have to go to training and I have to get better. <laughs> wow, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really, you're the biggest example or the biggest figure that for example for all teenagers and you know like when you have a dream you need to do some things like really yeah. really you have to commit it with your goals yes okay muy bien a ver. <laughs> pues qué maravilla de chica o sea no saben lo, lo que me está diciendo es como un verdadero ejemplo para todos los chicos que ahorita están en que no saben qué hacer y que no, 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 no. Esta chica sabía lo que quería desde los 10 años. Ahí les va. Resulta que ella, como les estaba comentando, se venía a Laredo. A, bueno, yo no estoy en Laredo, estoy en la Ciudad de México, pero se iba a Laredo, que está aproximadamente, eh, aproximadamente como a 20 minutos de su casa. Y al principio pues estaba chiquita y la llevaba a su mamá, ¿no? Su mamá estaba un poco asustada porque se pensaba que se iba a lastimar el cuerpo, ¿no? De tanto catorrazo que le daban, pues decía, no, no, a ver, espérate, llévate la leve. Y ella no, siguió y siguió a tal grado de que también se hizo amiga de algunos que ella me comenta que fueron como hasta sus hermanos mayores, como Johnny Angel, ¿verdad? Como Johnny Angel. Y, 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 me, y ella me decía que, que, ellas, que ellos le daban un, un aventón hacia donde vivía. Pero eso no es lo más loco. Lo más loco es que cuando ella empieza a ir a la academia de Booker T, a los 16 años, tenía que pasar hasta 7 horas de ida y venida, y ella tenía que ponerse a hacer su tarea en el camión sola. ¡Sola! Y cuando tenía de que la vacación, tenía vacaciones de Spring Break, o sea, de este, el, el, la o sea, allá tienen vacaciones como durante la primavera, y también las vacaciones de, de invierno. Ella prefería irse a entrenar en vez de irse con sus amigos a la fiesta. Es por eso que Roxanne Pérez se merece un gran aplauso. ¡Eh! Muy bien. Muy bien. Ok. And do you speak Spanish? Just a bit? I speak a little bit. Um, but sometimes, like, I'm not too fluent. Uh -huh. So I make jokes. I don't know if you've seen... Well, I'm sure you've seen the movie Selena. And... Okay. Where she's doing the interview, she's like, estoy muy excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But if I speak, like, if I'm speaking Spanish, you understand me. Yeah. Almost everything. Eh, muy bien, muy bien. <laughs> muy bien. So now, literally, your entry to WWE was awesome. You've only been here in a short time, but uh, you have shown us that you have all the talent and everything that you need, you are already a superstar. Please tell us about that moment when you learned you were joined and when you knew, when you realized that you were joined um, to WWE. Oh my gosh. Um, so I actually did two tryouts. So I did one in December and that was the, um, the, the normal one that they do where it's like 50 people and it's two days and you're there at the PC. Um, and uh, they called me back and they said, okay, we're, we're not hiring you yet. We want to bring you back for an extended tryout in February. And that will be three weeks. So um, I was there at the PC for three weeks. Um, every single day it was like 8 a.m. to like 8 p.m. 
we had like uh like small small breaks in between um but it was intense it was intense and sometimes i i would like during those three weeks i would get down on myself because i i would just think like oh like like i wonder why they didn't sign me the first time like i really hope that they signed me this time and i just knew that i had to do everything possible to show them like you guys need roxy <laughs> you guys yeah. need um, so that's what I did. And, uh, the last week they brought us separately into a room and that's when they told us like, okay, you're going to be a WWE superstar. And I started crying. I couldn't believe it. Cause it was just, <laughs> like, it was just since I was, since I was 10 years old, I, I, I said that I was going to do it. And, and for them to finally tell me like, you are a WWE superstar. It was just, it was mind blowing for me. It was just like, my biggest childhood dream, like everything that I've ever worked for, like all of all of the all of the hard times that happened during my wrestling career, like they were all so worth it in that moment. Um, and right after I walked out and I called my parents and uh, I FaceTimed them and I was like, guess what? I'm a WWE superstar. <laughs> and uh, they started crying because <laughs> they were just so happy. So, yeah, that was a really, really great feeling. <laughs> Oh my God! I think it's one of the your best memories. I mean, the best memories in your life, right? Yeah, definitely. It gives me the chills even like talking about it. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I think more than anyone or something, it's kind of oh my God, ten years because almost ten years that you've been like dreaming and working so hard and training so hard, and finally it was your goal because yeah. it was your effort, nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. <risa> Muy bien. Pues la pregunta aquí fue, ¿cómo fue ese maravilloso momento? Porque seguramente yo me lo esperaba, que iba a ser increíble este momento cuando WWE le dijo, ¿qué crees? Que ya eres superestrella de WWE. Y me dijo, no, bueno, fue increíble porque después de, o sea, de, de trabajar duro desde los 10 años, eh, estuve en un... Eh, ay, ¿cómo...? Uh, how do you say on December that uh, you, you've been there for the first time, right? In performance, in the... Um, yeah. My, try out. Yeah, try yeah. out, sí. Eh, ella estuvo primeramente en diciembre como intentándolo en try out y pues no pasó hasta febrero, ¿no? Y ella estaba como, pero ¿por qué no pasé? No sé qué, bueno. Y estuvo como súper fuerte, trabajando tres semanas, sin descanso, dando, dando, dando lo mejor de ella hasta que la agarraron y la pusieron en un cuarto y le dijeron, ¿qué crees? Que eres superestrella de WWE. Y ella dijo que puh, empezó a llorar y estaba demasiado emocionada porque sabía que después de todo el esfuerzo que había hecho, por fin su sueño se había hecho realidad. Entonces, lo primero que hizo fue hablar a sus papás y les dijo, ¿qué creen? Que soy una superestrella de WWE. Y sus papás también empezaban a llorar porque seguramente sabían todo el esfuerzo que había hecho su hija para llegar a ese momento. <laughs> ¡Qué bonito! Ok. So, on the breakout tournament after defeating Lash Legend, you face uh, Tiffany Stratton and in a wonderful match to be the, um, to be the winner of the tournament. You be the, the, the winner of the tournament. What a great achievement you had that night. I mean, really. Congratulations. Thank What do you consider was the hardest part? Of the tournament? Yeah. Ooh. Um, I guess just like, like having to go through all those women, like being, like being there from the first round all the way to the last, because, um, like all these women are so incredible. Uh, I faced Kiana James. I faced Slash Legend, and then I went on to face Tiffany Stratton. And Tiffany Stratton, she was probably like one of my toughest opponents. Um, she's amazing, but um, yeah, I guess just just having to 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 pull through throughout that whole that whole tournament, and then I finally did it. <laughs> so that was really cool, and um, it was really cool as well because I used to watch the May Young Classic when I was younger. And I always wanted to be in that in that tournament. Um, but then they made a whole new tournament. And then I was the winner of the first ever breakout tournament. So I just thought that was really cool because it was the first breakout tournament and I was the winner. 
Um, so I didn't get to do the Mayan Classic, but I feel like that was that was a much bigger accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> Muy bien. Pues bueno, en el eh, estábamos hablando ahorita de lo que pasó en el Breakout Tournament, eh, porque qué match se aventó. O sea, la verdad es que yo por eso les digo que entró con todo. O sea, después de derrotar a, a Lash Legend, eh, estuvo contra Tiffany Stratton y, y yo no, no. Entonces yo le dije, ¿qué fue lo más difícil? Y me dijo, bueno, lo más difícil fue pasar entre, o sea, por todas estas chicas que son impresionantemente talentosas y son súper buenas y llegar a la final. Porque <coughs> ella estaba, o sea, de, de pequeña ella veía el Mayon Classic y decía, yo quiero estar ahí. Pero ahora que estuvo en el Breakout Tournament y lo ganó, se dio cuenta de que para ella fue todavía mucho mayor y es bien padre que se dé esa victoria y ese reconocimiento, porque claro que sí fue, o sea, llegando y rompiéndola con todo. So, uh, I want to say it again. We are impressed because uh, even though you have been in the company for a short time, you already beat Toxic, toxic Attraction for the NXT Tag Team uh, Championship. What does victory mean to you? Oh, um, I guess just, I feel like I, I, I keep saying that it's just so cool to me, but it just really is because like, Uh, when I was younger, like I wanted to be a WWE superstar, but I also wanted to be a WWE champion. Um, that was always my goal to be at the time. I wanted to be Divas champion one day. Um, and now there's so many more opp opportunities besides just the Divas champion because that, that's all there was. Um, now we have the, the women's tag team titles. Yeah. We have the, the 24 7 championship. We have the Raw title, the SmackDown title. So there's so many more things to accomplish now for women in WWE. And I think that that's so amazing. So just to, to in that moment, to, to hold those titles with, at the time, my best friend, not anymore. No, but I know. at the time, that was a very cool moment because uh, me and Cora, we used to talk about when we were both on the independent scene, we hadn't made it to WWE yet. And we would always, we would message each other and say, oh, one day we're going to be on WWE together. One day we're going to be tag team champions together. And to to share that moment with her and be in the ring with her and, and just look at each other and say, like, we did it. Like, we we, we manifested this. We, we yeah. worked. It was, it was really cool. <laughs> muy bien. Bueno, pues, eh, le dije, ¿no? O sea, estoy, estamos muy impresionados porque... A pesar de que lleva súper poquito tiempo en, en WWE, todos los logros que ha tenido esta chica han sido impresionantes. O sea, sabemos lo que pasó, por ejemplo, que derrotó a las Toxic, Toxic Attraction y se llevó los campeonatos de parejas de NXT. Le pregunté que cómo había sido y ella me dijo, no, bueno, fue increíble porque eh, en ese momento con su amiga, la que era su amiga Cora Jade, habían manifestado y habían pensado lo increíble que iba a ser si tuvieran esos campeonatos en, en sus manos, ¿no? Y con todo esto que pasó, haberlo cumplido, pues para ella es un logro impresionante. So, you mentioned Cora Jade. Before it was an amazing friendship and everything, but, um, I mean, let's talk about Halloween Havoc, NXT Halloween Havoc. What happened with Cora Jade? I mean, why did you react react like that? Um, I think like 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 I said before, uh, on NXT, like I didn't like the person that I became in that match because I I, I a few years ago I would have never thought to do that to use all those weapons on her and have a have that type of match with her. Um, But I think just it was just like built up emotion of just feeling like betrayed. And and like I said, like we would message each other before even coming to WWE and talk about how one day we're going to make all of this happen and then do it together. And then we finally did that. And I guess uh, I guess I was just about to just take one step higher than her and she didn't like that. And she turned her back on me in my championship match. And I don't know. It was just, 
it was just it felt it felt more than just a, a friend betrayal because she felt like my mm-hmm. sister so when she did that it was just it, it broke my heart and um after weeks of just her trying to attack me and trying to get me from behind and it was just too much and I was like you know what if she wants me to be this person then then I'm gonna be that person and that's what happened <laughs> yeah oh my god it was too much I mean it was perfect but yeah now I know that Cora Jade she knows she what knows. is happening with you yeah muy bien <laughs> pues a ver Qué bonita amistad tenían, eran como hermanitas y ya sabemos que Cora Jade parece que le entró como la envidia, como que sintió ahí celos, algo acerca de que, pues, la verdad es que Roxanne lo está haciendo muy bien, está subiendo cada vez más. Entonces, ella se sintió traicionada, ¿no? Y lo que nos dice es que, más allá de que fuera una amistad, de que una amiga me esté traicionando, es que era mi hermana. Era mi hermana con la que habíamos pensado tantas metas, con la que habíamos querido lograr tantas cosas. Y vio que iba un paso más adelante y me empezó a traicionar, ¿no? Entonces, ella intentó hacerlo como por las buenas hasta que dijo, ya. Si quieres ver quién soy realmente para que tú ya te pongas también, pongas tu límite, esta soy yo. Y reájale, qué buen match nos regalaron en este Halloween Tabok. Ok. So I remember very well the six uh, women tag team match you had with Raquel and Shotzi against uh, Damage Control in SmackDown. So how was that experience for you? That was that was very surreal. Um, so SmackDown was actually the first live WWE show that uh, my dad actually took me to. So I was maybe like 11. And it was over there in Laredo, and uh, he surprised me. He uh, he was like, come on, we're going somewhere. And I was like, where are we going? And uh, we get to the arena, and I walk in, and they have all the WWE merch. And I was like, oh, we're at a WWE show, and it was SmackDown. Um, so to, to have my debut on SmackDown and then be able to be in the ring with, like, such amazing woman i i actually know uh raquel and shotzi from the independent scene so um shotzi i had a match with her once on the independent scene and then raquel she was actually we never wrestled but she was on the same show that i was in my debut when i was 14 so i've known her for a very long time so that was really cool to be paired up with them and then be able to wrestle one of my childhood idols, Bailey. Um, it was just everything in that moment, it was just so perfect. Um, it was a really full circle moment and my mom was there as well. Um, so she was in the crowd and she was so happy. So yeah, that that was that was surreal. <laughs> oh, qué padre, qué bonito. Congratulations. Thank you. Eh, bueno, pues estábamos hablando ahora de la vez que estuvo en SmackDown junto con Raquel y Shotzi eh, enfrentando a Damage Control, ¿no? En SmackDown. Es importante decir que fue en SmackDown. Porque yo le dije, ¿cómo fue esta experiencia para ti? Y me dijo, a ver, es que yo ya conocía previamente también a, a Raquel y a Shotzi. Con Shotzi, es, o sea, en el lado independiente. A Raquel la conoció cuando tenía 14 años y estuvieron ahí cara a cara. O sea, imagínense eso, era una niña. Yo jugaba con Barbies todavía, cuando tenía 14 años, y ella se estaba enfrentando a Raquel Rodríguez. Oh, yo, ta- mi Dios. yo también. Ah, mira, muy Bar- bien. The wrestlers. Muy bien. Pero ella jugaba con las Barbies luchadoras. Muy bien. Eh, y, y entonces, él dice que fue muy especial, porque su papá la llevó cuando tenía 11 años. A ver... Eh, SmackDown en Laredo, que la llevó de sorpresa. Entonces, cuando llegó y vio como toda la mercancía de, de WWE, dijo, ¡ay, no, Dios mío, qué padre! Entonces, estar en ese show, y aparte de todo, eh, enfrentando a Daily, que era como una de sus superestrellas más así emblemáticas, dijo, pellizquenme que estoy soñando. <risa> Entonces, fue un sueño para ella hecho realidad. Como todo lo que ha pasado con esta chica, wow. Este es el claro ejemplo de que si lo manifiestas, si lo piensas, si lo trabajas, se cumple trabajando duro. Sí. Y ya, ahora se puede dar el lujo de despertarse un poquito más tardecito. <laughs> <laughs> Pasarla bien también. So, let's imagine that you have a WWE Magic Lab. 
What would uh, you wish for? Who? Um, maybe to be because my dream was always to be a, a Divas champion when I was a kid. So maybe if this is possible, if I am Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion at the same time, <laughs> one day. <laughs> La niña quiere hacer historia. Yo le dije, imagínate que vamos a tener una lamparita mágica de WWE, ¿qué es lo que le vas a pedir? Y ella dijo, mira, a mí la verdad es que me encantaba el campeonato de Ibas, ¿no? Entonces, a mí lo que más me gustaría hacer, campeona de Raw y campeona de SmackDown <laughs> al mismo tiempo. <laughs> okay, I think it's a very hard task for the... For I, the... <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> no, 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 I'm completely sure. I mean, come on, you're here for a year and all your goals and all the things that you're said it, they're amazing. So I'm sure. And I want to say, I knew it. What? Yes, I said WrestleMania too. Ah, y también WrestleMania. Check. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so Survivor Series, it's coming and all the WWE Universe are very excited about that. I have to confess that is one of my favorite uh, premium live events. I love it, really. Yeah. <laughs> so now, talking about wishes, what will you? What will be your dream uh, war games? Hmm, like my team? Yeah. Hmm. I think my dream war games team would be. Let's see. Okay. Well, I would have chosen Cora, but she's. She's, she lost that. She lost that now. <laughs> But I would choose Indy Hartwell. Okay. I would choose Becky Lynch. Me, Indy Hartwell, Becky Lynch. I would choose... Let's see, let's see. This is hard. <laughs> yeah. Becky Lynch. They, like, any wrestlers? Yeah, any wrestler. Okay. Be me, Becky Lynch, Indy Hartwell. I'll choose AJ Lee. <laughs> okay. And one more, I would choose. Hmm. Bailey. <laughs> ah, muy bien, muy bien. Okay. Pues a ver, aquí la pregunta fue. Vamos a imaginarnos ahorita que estábamos hablando con la lamparita y el genio. ¿Cuál sería su War Games, de, el equipo de War Games así de ensueño, no? Y me dijo, Indy Hartwell, Becky Lynch, Bailey, and... I AJ. <laughs> AJ Lee y AJ Lee. Hay nada más. Para que lo tengamos considerado, qué gran team. Yo quiero ver también ese War Games. I want to be in first line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, now, are you ready for uh, some questions, fans' questions? Yes. <laughs> eh, muy bien. A ver. Uh, uh, uh. This one, this is nice. Edgar, what is your favorite food? My favorite food would have to be, I love ramen noodles. Noodles, yes, like the sopa de noodles. <laughs> amo, amo. <laughs> But actually, I have to say, because um, I know that you have some Latin uh, influence on you. Yeah. But as well, I don't know why, but some like Asia or something. I get that all the time, like all the time but um, I actually don't have any like Asian or, or any descent in me but uh, just Puerto Rican and a little bit of uh, Mexican um, but I love Asian food I love all Asian food like uh, there's a Vietnamese soup called pho is the best I love it me and my boyfriend go all the time <laughs> so nice I really really like it <laughs> Perfect. Bueno, su comida favorita, ramen, noodles. Ramen o noodles también. La sopita, pues, le encanta la sopa porque también le gusta todo lo asiático. Yo le dije, a ver, sabemos que tienes un poco de influencia latina, pero 
No sé ustedes qué piensen, pero para mí como que tiene cara de japonés, sí, o sea, tiene rasgos asiáticos, y me dijo, me lo dicen todo el tiempo, pero no, lo único que tengo de asiático es mi estómago que le encanta la comida asiática, <risa> y también dijo que con su novia va mucho a comer po, o sea, sí. que es una sopa vietnamita que les recomiendo demasiado, muy bien, um, so, this one, oh, wait, guess I need to... Any tips for becoming a beginner wrestler? <coughs> hmm. I would say, um, so I actually started doing uh, gymnastics, like tumbling. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that uh, when I was younger. Like I started when I was like maybe 10 um, because my mom actually asked the the local wrestling school if I could start training when I was way younger than 13 and they said ah oh, she's too she's too young but put her in gymnastics and tumbling and that'll help her a lot when she comes to wrestling which it did because uh for training when you're a beginner they do a lot of roles um they do a lot of um like a lot of like agility things so um that helped me so much and then i guess just starting to go to the gym Uh, that's a really good first start, you know, start getting uh, your cardio up. So go for runs, um, get on the Stairmaster, the bike, um, that, that'll help a lot. Um, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Muy bien. Pues a ver, ¿algún consejo para empezar a hacer, o sea, para <clears throat> convertirse en un, eh, un luchador principiante? Y ella dijo, mira, déjenme le hacer las preguntas por acá. Ella dijo, lo mejor es comenzar con gimnasia, ¿no? O sea, ella comenzó en el tumbling, ¿no? Que es el brincolín. En español es brincolín. Ah, oh, ok. <ríe> entonces, <ríe> brincolín, ya. Yeah. Eh, entonces ella comenzó en el brincolín porque su mamá le dijo, no, 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 a ver, espérate, estás mucho ahorita como para que yo te vaya a meter a las luchas mejor. Primero te preparo con esto. Entonces, ella hacía gimnasia, también, por ejemplo, patines, ¿no? O sea, patines. Eh, ¿Qué otra cosa? Ah, el gimnasio. Dijo que es Súper importante, ¿eh? como tener tu cardio, como tener ahí, o sea, estructura de, de correr, de hacer este tipo de ejercicios. Eso es muy importante. Ok, and the last question. Uh, 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 uh. This one. 